<laughs> just pick a subject that gets me fired up, and then that's not hard. Let by me the go. Way. Yeah, yeah. Is Dak Prescott as good as Lamar Jackson? Is Dak um, Prescott as bad as Lamar Jackson? Um, hey, you want to address it? Well, if you look at the stats, uh, yeah, yeah, they're they're pretty similar. Um, I would say that Lamar can can run better than Dak, but if you look at, at passing yards, touchdowns, you know, all the all the intangibles for a quarterback, I would say they're actually pretty similar. You were making that point at lunch yesterday. Mike Hornby did not believe you, by the way. Well, Mike Hornby doesn't look at stats. And, they, and they're both injury-prone, too. I think yeah, that's absolutely. Let's welcome in our guest. He knows a few things about injuring people. The Beast, Travis Pagent, r- wrestling champion of the free world. Hi, thank you for having me, man. I haven't been here for a while. Well, so it's been, a, Yeah, it's awesome. You guys trying to bait me in there on that Lamar Jackson oh, Dak thing, huh? I don't think he knows, much you know a little bit about quarterbacks. Get it started. <laughs> yeah, I am a diehard, 100% Dallas Cowboy fan. So to me, there's three, four great quarterbacks in the world, starting with Troy Aikman, Tony Romo and Dak Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all talking about? <laughs> Tony, hey, Tony Romo is a great broadcaster. He was a fun quarterback, not a great one, but he was a, he's a great broadcaster, man. I feel wholeheartedly that Tyson, if he does one thing for me, that I will, in fact, be in the room with Tony Romo one day just to <laughs> hang out because that's my guy. I'm surprised you haven't been already based on your NFL network uh, body of work, which was just absolutely riotous. Uh, uh, now, you've gotten some national exposure in the past. But oh, way to downplay that real but, quick. But have <laughs> you, That's an understatement. But, of, that's like saying you have a morning show here in the panhandle. But have you ever gotten the national exposure that you got Yes. Recently on the NFL Network. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I don't know, dude. Well, trust because me. Because you were known by just about everybody after that week. Not come just on. Not just fans of what you do. Do you remember the best damn sports show? I do. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm sure you didn't catch my episode there. Also, the David Letterman show. Did you catch that one? Uh, I it's mean, been a while, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and it was a late night show. Uh, yeah, all This I'm was saying, during the day. And it was no, a late yeah. night show before social media was what it is now. I can say that I'm very happy for some of the exposure that Tyson has given me. However, I am not bowing down nowhere near yet to um, to his exposure and what he could do for me that I haven't already done. Now, that must be in your soul because I didn't even bring up your son. Right. I'm just talking well, about when you, you said did. NFL Network. You no, had no, no, to be, no, no. You know, I know. I did, I, you know the the introduction was was a little shaky. John, <laughs> can you can you can you, I mean you heard the first line? I uh, yes. You've done, hey, Jonathan, I, I, I was I was a little I was yeah. a little worried there. I mean, I remember the documentary on ESPN. Yeah, yeah that was I mean, big. We I got mean, big. Was big, which was huge. I think that was the NFL Network pales in comparison to what ESPN not, did with not with Travis during a few the years combine, ago. man. Not during the combine espn is is uh, other than games live broadcast of games espn's audience has dwindled to a loyal few right but the nfl well, network not, i was not aware of that that's that, another but, dig but that was but that was a and few years ago when it, espn it, was still ESPN's, a lot bigger trust me i have disney stock espn has been the suck in the drain that is disney stock price it's but are, espn but are you talking i don't about, know if it's not ron DeSantis. <laughs> Are you talking about the combine or, or the senior bowl? Because that was epic. The NFL, the the I'm, interview when you when you arm wrestled the guy yes. at the senior, that was that's what I'm talking one of about. The funniest clips I have ever and seen. It was all over Twitter. It's still on YouTube. In, in, in if you nation, have not seen that, in seconds. That was one of the best I've classic. ever seen. That Unbelievable. Is that is what I'm talking about. Yes, that was at the senior bowl, was it not? Yeah, that was. Yeah. How many clips of you on David Letterman are circulating? Um, currently, who's talking uh, about them? Zero. How many people talked about that clip on the NFL Network of you arm wrestling? What's his name? It is the hot topic right now. Thank you. Yes. This However, is my point. Why are you proving I'm my not, point for me? No, I'm not. I am simply. I want you to take back I the intro simply, <laughs> that you gave me because you just proved my point. I would simply like for you to rewind and remember the opening statement that you said, okay? And then if you do that, you will realize that also in my life that I was the headliner on AMC's Game of Arms. I watched Right it. after The Walking Dead I got done it. with the 13 million viewers, 8 million people mm-hmm. stayed. And I was all Travis Bajan, the whole unscripted version of it that was amazing. I could walk down the street in Charlestown and they're coming. Now, 
It's not the hot chicks like you would imagine. It is actually the mechanic and the farmer. But, I mean, brakes slamming. The guy gets out, forces his wife to take this photo of the beast. So I appreciate the fact that today it is all about that NFL network. But make no mistake about it, I am a bad dude who who has lived 46 years on this life, 25 of them as the guy, right? So, um, yeah, it's amazing and awesome. And I will tell you this, for the first time ever, for the last 10 days, I have had a camera this close to my face, meaning ESPN and Sports Center featured has brought in a big, I mean, the biggest crew I've ever seen. Um, about 11 guys have been here since last Monday. And then the NFL Network arrived here the day before um, the pro day and they will be staying up until this saturday um and who are they here to see they are here to see tyson who, agent who joins us by telephone right now he's he's traveling from point a to point b tyson good morning thanks for calling in did we lose him Yep, we lost Tyson. I hey, was so call in if you can get him back or send him a text ask him to call back because yeah, he got I'm he got sure he, he got disconnected that's awesome that he actually showed up because he has been stiffing me all morning. Yeah, where, where's, where's he headed? Where's he headed? He actually was at Martinsburg High School doing a uh, a presentation with this balance thing with Derek Gallagher and mm-hmm. Jim Glockman, who's a balance expert that's here along for some content for the shows. And then from there, he is driving, I think, to New York City here at some point to um, – to hang out with his agent and do some um, do some things in New York. Okay, and Tyson has an agent, and how did you secure this agent for Tyson? So we decided about in the 10th grade when Tyson threw that 45-yard perfect touch pass to Stevie Edmonds there. It was about the middle of the first quarter in Charleston. Tyson was in the 10th grade. Sitting beside me was Greg Thompson, who is an NBA agent Mm -hmm. and a friend of mine, a lawyer in Huntington, and he was working on some arm wrestling contracts for me. And that day we decided that Greg was going to be Tyson's NFL agent. And then as we, you know, kept, you know, he kept getting better. It, um, it kind of, we ran into that fact that maybe a year ago he could possibly actually this happen as maybe a priority free agent or the luckiest thing in the world would be a late round draft pick. And we're talking the Harlan Hill year back in, you know, 2021. So Greg, well, I started looking at Greg sideways like, man, I hope this guy can really do what we're doing because now we may need a guy. So Greg ended up taking the test, passing with flying colors, and then right at the last minute, I really got introduced to the agent business because I interviewed about 600 of them and met with about 60 of them live. That must have been an experience for it them. It was. Um, I mean, I, was, I had so much fun because right? <laughs> it always was the same. They were either a boutique agency that really wanted to be a father figure mentor or they were an outrageously big company who had plenty of money to throw around. And both of them had plenty of debate top or, uh, you know, just – reasons why you should go with them and not the other one. So I got all of this knowledge by going in between and listening. And then finally I realized that uh, it's a really tough business, the agent business, because those guys more or less, it's, I say it's the equivalent of the guys on the last couple of days of the month. And he's got that car out there that he's, he knows what the number is for him to make $100. And he knows that it's almost over for the month and you got, you know, buyers, there's like four buyers out there and they're just killing you. You're by yourself and you already know you're only going to make a little bit of money and they're just killing you more. So what I learned is, you know, good luck if you want to become a sports agent because the competition is tough and they will try to anything to steal you away. And, and I'm, you know, I am bribable. So hey, <laughs> what what you got? What you got? Let me see what you got. So they, I mean, the, the sports agents recruit heavier than the than the colleges did. I it's, mean, they recruit a, like crazy. And how about the business plan of the agent that only is looking to poach clients for their second contract? Because that's the big one. That's the one, and that's and you know they can you can get rid of these agents so easily. It's like thirty days written notice. So with all that said, we have a long term friend that I know. 
Tyson knows and everyone knows that he has our best interest at heart. And because I am too afraid to mess it up, I got our agent, Greg Thompson, mm -hmm. with a big agency, what I feel is a big agency, a guy with you know 30 guys right in there. Milk sure. and Honey is the um, name of the agency. Their representative is Jake Presser. And this guy here is out of the 600 people that we spoke to, or I spoke to, and got them narrowed down to the 15 visits that Tyson would actually take. Because, you know, Tyson, it ain't always easy to get Tyson, as you can clearly see, <laughs> where I want him to be at all times. Um, so out of the 15 guys that he sat down with, Jake was the coolest guy that he, and he really liked him. So we have a dual team, Greg Thompson and Jake Presser. And these two guys, I feel like I just, you know, there's Tyson, there's a big moat around it with alligators and sharks, and that's me. And then <laughs> there's another big fence down there, electric fence. It's got all the snipers everywhere, and that's Greg. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Jake out there who I feel has an army and every bit of technology and experience that we would need to make sure that your pops didn't sign you with a – a buddy lawyer and ruin everything what percentage does an agent take an agent will take what i've learned almost nothing <laughs> so our the mandatory or the 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 first thing they put in front of you is a first round draft pick they'll take one percent the second to fourth round two percent anything later than that they get three percent and no matter what they work at 2% for the second contract if you're able to get there. So I did a little negotiating and made sure that Tyson saved a little bit of money on the 3% and he had these two guys that are going to be with us for the rest of our lives. And, um, and I think a lot of those guys would, during the process, would find out um, how much I had their back and how once you're with us and you're on our squad, right, whether it's Ernie McCook, Dave Walker, you know, whoever it is, once you're with us, you're with us forever. And the good thing about being with us is that you got me on your team. So I am a a winner. So, you know, I'm going to follow the rules as much as possible. I'm going to teeter-totter around that WVSAC as much as possible or whatever's needed. And I am going, when I'm with you, where I'm going to add value to our squad. And most importantly, I'm going to let you know when the snakes come around and then we can all have fun with them. And then ultimately, if we all get balled out, we all get balled out, but we're all happy <laughs> together <laughs> the buyout. in this thing. But, so I think a tremendous level of honesty and um, and communication is is the how I. John, if you're waiting for him to stop, it ain't going to happen. Well, I got to so ask. You better I jump in this. now. I got to ask this from what you said before. Tell us some of the crazy stuff that agents try to do, say, give you guys to get to get Tyson to sign with them. Some of some of the so fun, cool the stuff. The big thing that. Um, the, the elephant in the room is the marketing advance, right? So as soon as I heard that, I said, Tyson, <laughs> we got him. He said, uh, what's that mean? I said, well, from what I understand, they are going to give you between 250 and $1 million to l sign you knowing that they get 100% of the marketing until that money's paid back. Now, when you say that to intelligent people, they red flags pop up, right? Not me, right? I'm like, I right, give me a million dollars, and you don't have to explain to me where the job is. I'm in. But my son, who happens to be a little sharper than me somehow, um, says to me, Pops, I'm not doing any marketing until I am good enough to garner marketing. And then, of course, the boutique agencies and or agencies that didn't want to give you a million dollars would explain to you that you will be doing every horrible commercial slash signing. They will take Panini deals at 50 cent a signature and get 10 million of them. And, and you will work to get that money back once again. I'm asking where the problem is. I will set up a sweatshop of people signing his signature, and we will get we will get through a million. So when it was all said and done, Tyson was not interested in taking um, the marketing advance. But you can imagine how the big the big companies can come and take sure. any kid that they wanted, especially when there's absolutely no guarantee, Tyson, you will ever make a million dollars playing football. Mm -hmm. 
unless you would have let me sign you away to <laughs> this shark who was in the waters right here. And he had the Lambo and the, the private jet. Standing outside the 7-Eleven oh. signing footballs. Woo! What, but who? I mean. Get a Slurpee and a signature. Could be worse. <laughs> Yeah. Right. You could not have enough money to show the basketball game next week. Right. You could That's be true. in that profession. So, yep. so, um, so you got about you got about a month to go be, before the the draft, and you've already done your pro day. You've already done the combine. Uh, how you feeling right now? I am just filled with a tremendous amount of anxiety, pride. I mean, I already know that anybody who thinks that he possibly underachieves in the draft has to know from my perception there is no underachieving right because of what has already transpired right i have a son that allowed me from eighth grade on to walk around and everyone starts to say man your son's you know your son's getting really good right and then all the great things in high school, which being the quarterback at Marchburg High School, winning the state championship, going 28 and 0, being a great area player of the year, that's about all I really needed from a swag standpoint, just so you know. <laughs> it doesn't take much. So I have already walked around as the most proudest human being that could be in existence the last eight years, four of which at Martinsburg High School. The other four at Shepherd University, where I think that he's supposed to come and just do okay and continue. But instead, my man just clicked better, 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 better. So now I've got Ezra over here throwing five touchdowns in the state championship and my man throwing the Hail Mary in Cookstown minutes apart. Mm-hmm. Right? So that was I, a crazy weekend. Right. So now, you know, if I am on my way home and a deer jumps out and decapitates me, trust me, I had the biggest smile on my face <laughs> for those years ever. Then you have Jim Nagy come and invite you to the Senior Bowl. You have the agent try to offer you a million dollar marketing advance, and I'm dying to take it. Right? <laughs> Moving forward. But um, what is that after taxes? Like 600000 It depends on who does your taxes. <laughs> CPA Ken Apple, you know, 263 1100 He who takes the biggest risk <laughs> gets the biggest reward. So who knows how that would handle. I'm sure Tice would get a credible accountant, though. He does have one. Um, so, And then you fast forward more to my life is so amazing that the combine invite was just a regular Tuesday. Well, let's talk about the combine a little bit because, I mean, he's up there. He, he, he's he got the number one jersey, which means he's going first all the time. Which, no disrespect, but Bajan is my name. That's why he was first, yeah. right? Hey, Alphabetical I, order. I, yeah, I all get right. it. Um, but there were some studs there, obviously some studs. How do you think he stacked up and compared to some of the other uh, quarterbacks and well-known uh, big name quarterbacks uh, that were at the combine. Well, that's a great question, and I'm going to make sure that you know where I'm f- at, right? You're so, not biased at all. First of I all, really... <laughs> totally unrealistic, right? When it comes to we got Tyson. Like, okay, here he is. Well, here right. the show. The show's going to get serious. All right, Tyson Bajan, are you with us? Yes, sir. Awesome. Thanks for calling in. You're on with Rob and Mike and Jonathan Bodwell and the other guy you probably know pretty well. You can probably hear him without the microphone, but his name is, of course, Travis Pageant. Yeah. Oh, where are you, man? There's a lot going on in the background. Yeah, I'm at Shepard's practice right now. Oh, very nice. Okay, very good, very good. So, Mike, go ahead and re-ask your question because now you can ask it to the person who first-hand experienced it. Well, you, you were the, the first person to go during the combine you had the number one jersey on and how do you think you stacked up against some of the 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 big name quarterbacks that were there um during that combine i feel like i, I feel like i did what i was supposed to do i feel like i matched up um equally to everybody everybody that was there on the field uh, and i thought i sure that there is no difference between me or anybody else uh in the draft did you, from the day you got there, did you watch, I mean, coming out of Division Two, did you watch people, people's eyes as they saw what you did and watch them go, wow, we didn't, we didn't know this is who he was, this is what he could do? Uh, I think maybe I saw the, how people acted towards me or maybe they showed a little more appreciation for me after, after all the um, athletic events and, and throwing session because um, I think everybody – just kind of maybe thought that they extended me an invitation just because of the production I put up and not because that I'm, you know, able to play at that level. Uh, but I think after showing, you know, my level of play, people kind of appreciate me a little more and talk to me a little bit differently uh, after the fact. 
going through everything you went through, do you have any regrets that you did well, not go but, to a major college like those guys did? <laughs> no. I mean, what do you think? You think, you think I should have went no. to a bigger No, I think uh, you went right to the right place and had the best time possible, man. Good. We're on the same page there. Most definitely. Hey, you know, you asked that question, John. It takes me back to the documentary that they did about Martinsburg football, Tyson, back when you were in high school. And there's a scene there where David Walker is uh, outside of a shop downtown Martinsburg. He's talking on his phone to a West Virginia University football recruiter, and he's asking about Tyson Bajan. And he says, so no, there's, there's just no interest. And then uh, David shakes his head, and he says, I just don't understand that. What did you think when you saw that scene when that documentary was released? And I want to ask your dad the same thing. But you go first, Tyson. Uh, no, I mean, I wasn't surprised. I mean, they didn't offer me, so obviously there was no interest there. Um, I think they thought two other dudes on my high school team were better than me, um, which, which you know, I don't know, which I think is crazy. But hindsight, I, I can understand. Maybe they had a little bit more tools than I had at the present moment. Uh, but it was it was no surprise hearing that, I mean, because just the fact that they didn't offer me. Um, so I knew there wasn't really uh, that much interest there. Uh, but it was cool to kind of just see how they put that on the documentary, though. I guess you could use that as a motivating, motivating tool going forward. Travis? Uh, for me, that scene was just a shining example that Dave Walker is the an amazing human being and that a lot of times I feel like he would catch some slack about not helping kids get recruited when actually – you know, I've never seen heard the guys say a bad thing about anybody. Um, and for him to actually go to bat for Tyson just showed me that he got a lot of love for Tyson. And because of that, we got a lot of love for Dave Walker. I mean, what, what do you think? Uh, if WVU had recruited you, they would have won an extra 20 games in the last couple of years and they wouldn't have been terrible. That's how I feel. I don't want to put yeah, Tyson in the situation of answering that one. I think that Tyson would have been, uh, he'd have won the Heisman Trophy and that West Virginia would have been in the Final Four probably two of those four years. So I have, um, I, I also really, really would like to thank Dana Hogerson because because of him, I think that's the only school that probably could have got Tyson um, and to not go to Shepard. Um, and the fact that he didn't and Tyson went to Shepard and we got to play for Ernie McCook and that now after going to that pro day, knowing that Tyson's future, if anything ever happens to him, I am almost positive he could be either the president at Shepard, the head football coach, or the mayor. Definitely the mayor. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, Tyson, Have they started no putting the statue together yet? I, <laughs> nah, not yet. Oh, yeah. Tyson, now you were on the sports mix with uh, Spencer, Nick, and Cullen uh, not too long ago, and you said something I thought was pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about before, and that was you had said throughout your high school and college career you went into every game thinking the other quarterback was better than you were, and that was, no, a, no. That was a motivating factor no, for you. I, never, I did not say that. I said, <laughs> what, what, what did you say? I thought the quarterback was better than me. I thought that maybe I had – I thought that maybe the defense – uh, was better than me. All right, that's, so I misunderstood you. That's what I said. What? But, but then you said that you no longer were going to feel that way going forward. Yeah. What changed? Um, I think just uh, just being able to wrap my mind around the fact that I'm the only Division two quarterback to ever be invited to the Senior Bowl, um, one, of, one of the only D2 uh, handful of players to ever be invited to the Combine, most touchdowns. Uh, ever and I think after being able to do all that, I feel like I can now. You know, I could have done, I could have gone without all the maybe worrying that I did throughout my college career, just on if things are going to work out or not. And so now, you know, going forward, I know I, I know my my level of play, and I know what I bring to the table. So being able to understand that, play with a little bit more confidence early on, I think will I think it will do nothing but help me. Good answer. Well, I, I, speaking of somebody who saw every single one of your high school games, except I believe one, my friends and I used to play a little game when Martinsburg would get the ball on offense. We'd be like, all right, how many plays? Okay, they're going to score in three. They're going to score in two. And inv invariably, somebody would say they're going to score in one. And next thing you know, you're throwing a 70-yard touchdown pass. Um, unbelievable. That – and. From day one, it's been fun watching. What is, out of all this stuff, all this hype, all this stuff you've gotten to do with the NFL Network, the Senior Bowl, all that, what has been the biggest thing that has stood out to you? Um, 
I feel like come from this area, people put a put like Power Five and you know the, those big schools on a pedestal, and those players, um, you know, really on a pedestal. And I think just being able to be around them a lot, understand that they're normal people just like me, um, and you know, they they just been provided a little bit more resources than, than I was. So a lot of them maybe don't appreciate you know everything going on as as much as I um, as much as I do, and maybe it hasn't taken as much discipline. As it as it has in my, you know, in my personal experience, just coming from Shepherd with lack of resources, so maybe I'm able to work and do more with less. Um, so I think just appreciating the lower level I came from in that aspect, uh, but also understanding that all these dudes that everybody are, are saying are aliens, they're really just normal people. Mike Height, what do you got? So, uh, what are your expectations going forward? Obviously, the draft's coming up. So, uh, what what are your expectations? Uh, I'm trying not to have any expectations. I have it's so much unknown. I have no clue what's, what's, what's next for me or uh, where I'm going to end up. Um, but just trying to have no expectations and understand that I did everything I was supposed to do, and now it's kind of out of my control. So i got to let the, the uh, people at the NFL make their decisions um, and just make sure I'm always ready for any opportunity uh, that's you know given to me. What, what what are the nerves like? You got like a little less than a month to go. So what are the nerves like? Uh, I don't have any more nerves. The nerves were really just for this whole pre, all the, the three things I had to do for this pre-draft uh, experience, the, the senior bowl combine and pro day. Those were the pressure points of the, of this pre-draft process. And now that they're over, uh, I feel like I, I did well in all three, in all three events. And so now I'm, you know, like I said before, now it's out of my control. So there's, I really don't have anything to worry about besides staying ready. What are the interviews like as you get interviewed by the teams and they want to find out more about you as a person? Uh, I mean, they're fine. You know, you got to tell a lot of people the same story over and over, like where you grew up, who your family is, who you live with, you know, all those things. And then, um, but now since I've been home, it's been a lot more football oriented. Um, so that I have a lot more fun, you know, answering football questions rather than just telling people, you know, the same story over and over. But that's more so what it is. They want to make sure there's no red flags, that you're not a bad person, that their investment, you know, is going to the right kind of person. And in regards to Ezra, your younger brother, how much has he benefited from what you're going through and the trainers you've now been exposed to, Tyson? I think it's been huge. I think you can see it. I think I, like, based on where I was coming into my freshman year, versus where he is uh just from a resource and understanding mental standpoint i feel like he's you know a lot more well-rounded um as a quarterback than i was just based on kind of like what you said being able to be exposed to all these things these things that i've been able to 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 be a part of so i think that um that's been that's been huge for him and i think it's shown you know on all the times we're at the field and I think it's not just me that's, that's been able to see it. I think Coach McCook has been able to see it. You know, the staff at Shepherd's been able to see it, which is why I think they, you know, extended him the offer that they did and are excited for him to come be a part of the team. You know, everybody in this room here is a dad, right? And you, you know how you feel about your kids. And, I, and I'm just uh, – your, your, your dad, uh, Tyson, is obviously a unique animal, right? But I, but I just, I know how proud he is of you and, and Ezra, and I, I can see this guy, who obviously has a lot to be proud of in his own right and his own accomplishments, can't be more proud of anything else that you've ever done, Travis, than what's on the telephone right now and what's about to go to Shepherd. What a man! What a man! I, every day I, every day I wake up, I can't believe that he's, uh, you know, just so poised and on point at all times, and and I appreciate it more than anyone. Any final questions for Tyson? Tyson, what would you say to a uh, high school kid coming up who has, you know, who has potential, who has tools? What would you say about the work you've done, and and talk to him about how how you have to work to get where you are? And now has the ability to transfer. And now has the ability to transfer. But about the hard work, I mean, I've seen all the videos. I mean, I know how hard you work. What would you say to a high school kid about the work? Um, I would just try to get them to understand that they don't even understand what what work is yet like it, it, it's going to take more work than it's going to take 10 times the work that they're currently doing and then it's going to be even more work on top of that and then after that it's going to be more work on top of that so being able to put your head down stay true to the process not let um 
the plateaus that everybody goes through as an athlete physically and mentally uh, deter you know you away from your process and what and, and what you know you're supposed to do day in and day out um, being able to stack the days because then eventually two three four years five years down the line you go from being a division two kid to someone like me who's who's excelling at the at the senior bowl and the NFL combo Tyson thanks for calling in man we appreciate it yes sir thank you Tyson Bajant, Travis stays. He's got to get that lump out of his throat first, man. Mm. What a man. <laughs> what a man. A, that's a tough one, right? Studio with Mike Height, Johnny the Bod, John Bodwell, and that'd be Delegate Mike Height, of course. Delegate. <laughs> the arm wrestling champion of the free and captive world, Travis the Beast Bajant, who has been known to everybody in the world since his younger days. He's been on David Letterman, ESPN, NFL Network, and this show, too. Which has been the biggest thrill of your career, Travis? Um, this is the, this, this is the lowest out of the <laughs> ones that you, <laughs> that you listed. <laughs> but just know that I've been on some other broadcasts as well, so this ain't the worst. This is not the worst <laughs> show I've ever been on. Not the worst. Hey, we'll take it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we need to get that in the promo. <laughs> it not is now. the worst. <laughs> it is definitely now. The Beast. Uh, hey, uh, so... Uh, listening to your son on the telephone there and knowing what's uh, coming up uh, in the future, uh, what are you expecting? I mean, I, obviously I'm thinking you're like Super Bowl champ, MVP, but but let's temper that down for the next year or two because if he's drafted, it's going to be middle to late rounds. If he's not, whoa, he's whoa, a free agent signing. Whoa, what is this? What is this guy saying here? Hey, 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 hey. Hold him back. Hold him what? back. I mean, Day did one. Mel Kuyper just walk in here? Somehow in the world are any of us supposed to know mm -hmm. what exactly is going to happen? Now, I am with you that if you are just a non believer, you would just poke up on that blog and look at something that looks like it's all professional and stuff, but it's really hard to find the source. And then the better the source, the more scared they are and the more uninformed and the more misinformed they are. So I am telling you, Tyson's going to be the number one pick overall. I am completely confident of that. Second of all, if it doesn't happen, just know that if he, the when that phone rings after the draft and he is starting to negotiate with the Dallas Cowboys, most likely, to enter as well, a, they're going to have to trade up if he's going to be the. No, I'm one saying back. entering. I'm. I think that's going to happen. But just know that if he does not get drafted, and we are working on that priority free agents frenzy, right on who we, which roster we see and think we have the best opportunity. Mm -hmm. I you will not be able to tell the difference whether he is the number one draft pick or we sign that unrestricted free agent, priority free agent, whatever that deal is. Um, I am already at the very top, top, top of what you could be when it comes to being proud of your kid. Sure. So I, there is, like, I remember my boss telling me, uh, Greg Glassman, he's like, Travis, I'd sell this company and make more money if there was a room in this hotel I couldn't stay at. But as of right now, Trav, unless you told me wrong, we are at the penthouse suite. So there is no other hotel mm -hmm. that I can go to and stay at a nicer place than at the Trump Soho in New York on the penthouse suite. So why would I, why am I searching for a new level? There is no new level, right? So I'm already there. I, I do not care how it goes down. I choose to live in this super fun, comedic, but totally honest space where I feel that he has the potential to be the best quarterback who ever lived. Some free agents who have signed the NFL say that they have more leverage as a free agent than, say, a sixth or seventh round pick who has to go to that team. The free agent can negotiate with other teams that may be interested. No doubt. I've worked, I've interviewed 600 agents. If your guy gets picked, you say, man, don't listen to them guys. You don't want to be, you want someone to put their name on you. Right, And then if you got kids that sign restricted free agent deals, you say, hey, man, there's a lot more negotiating going on back here. You really don't even want to go in the sixth and seventh round. So I would prefer that some scout walk in there and pound his fist and say, that's our guy. Mm -hmm. Right now, I know that's a scary thing for that scout to do because it's a D2 level. But I urge you to pound the table and know that the best player on your team will be him eventually and i mean it usually for doesn't take very long 
in regards to what you've got coming up, where's where's your next uh, big thing? I will be in Istanbul on in Turkey again. The East versus West has kind of really took off in arm wrestling, and I am the um, a managing liaison, I would say, for the league, and then I do the commentary. Um, and 70,000 people are watching this pay-per-view for $20. Similar and, to the audience we have here daily. Uh, of course. Um, so arm wrestling has taken off huge in Istanbul, thanks to Mr. Ingen Terzi. So I will be broadcasting there on May 6th. Then the East vs. West finals in the U.S. will be run by me just right up in Virginia on um, June 3rd. And then um, from every weekend until... Um, the Shepherd football season opens, and if Ezra is actually playing, then I will kind of put a halt to arm wrestling until the football season's over. And then hopefully I will be watching. I mean, I should be super tuned into two preseason games like crazy and then awaiting for Tyson to get in the game. I, I heard that 80 some quarterbacks threw completions last year in the NFL. So that shows you that just the 32 guys don't get to play the whole game all the time. So I'm looking for Tyson to throw some completions and touchdowns and, um, and be an interesting story for you know the next 15 years to come. Mr. Bodwell. Well, 15 years. You're, you're cutting his career short, but that's okay. You know, well, some, I'm of these, just, I'm, some of these guys, 20, 25 years. <laughs> come on, man. No doubt. Yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm – I'm okay with that too, but I think that 15 years is a good number too, because you know hopefully Tyson will um, get married and have a couple kids, and and then we can I can try to not break the vicious chain that would be if you grew up in a super successful household where your parents had to work a lot and you raised a couple wimps. So I'm gonna make sure I'm there to make sure that we keep this tradition alive. We'll talk about that a little bit because you know, we talked a little bit off air about that that that. That Tyson became this. He be, through a lot of a lot of hard work, a lot of training, and and two parents that um, required a lot out of him um, on a daily basis, and not just a dad, but also a mom. So talk a little bit about your wife and the role she plays in in making this all happen. No doubt. So we were lucky enough that both of us were into fitness somewhat. I was kind of really not a gym rat, but strength was needed in the arm wrestling world. And my wife competed as um, a figure model for when Tyson was about two years old. She did her first competition and it was amazing. So she has been instrumental when it comes to Tyson had to go to the, you know, the gym daycare for two hours every morning growing up. And then when we got introduced to CrossFit, we both jumped in head first, you know, two gyms between Martinsburg and Charlestown and Tyson and Ezra were in the kids' class every single day from the time they were five years old. Um, and then, in Ezra, even earlier than that. Um, and then, as they got 12, 13, 14 years old, Tyson's teaching those kids' classes, too. So, a lot of times, the gym, I would say, is one of those extra things that an athlete has to get in. But sometimes, kids are lucky enough like to do the stuff their parents do. So I always use the analogy as a plumber. If your dad's a plumber, usually you can fix the kitchen sink, right? Mm -hmm. Because it just was an everyday occurrence in, in life and vocabulary and, and experience. Um, so Tyson's life was four hours was spent in the gym every day anyway. So I don't think that he had to check that box as a something extra I have to do. I just think it was a part of his life. And I just think that, you know, there's so much, you know, bad stuff going on in the world. And if you just if you just go back and, and think about where it all took a bad turn, it to me, you're super lucky to be alive anyway, as and that goes for any human being. If you think about the timing and the just crazy science about being born and, and living. But if you're lucky enough to uh, to grow up in a house with two parents that um, that are married and in love and 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 just really working at it. Um, you just have such a tremendous advantage. You throw in the fact that you're an athlete and your parents own the gym. Check, right? So as much credit as you can give Tyson, I think that his life was lucky enough to check a few boxes that most people think are boxes, but really just life experience can, um, can put you ahead. 
So what about your daughter? Is she the next great uh, Bajan athlete? What is uh, Ty- we, We've talked to every, about everybody else. We don't want to leave her out. No doubt. Yeah, so DM's a, a interesting a situation. So I, she does not attack it, volleyball, the way that um, Tyson and Ezra attack football. She is very good um, for someone that just started playing a few months ago. So I think that I kind of scarred her as a young basketball player and treated her just like Tyson and Ezra, and she was not feeling it. Um, however, <laughs> I can tell you that she's you know flirting with that six foot mark, and we are working every day to uh, to become a better volleyball player. So if in fact she um, personally um, does any extra. Uh, she's probably going to be pretty good. Um, and then, you know, the sky's the limit, I would feel, as soon as she shows me that uh, it's, she really, really wants it. You uh, have a couple of guys in the area who've played in the NFL, Trayvon Wesco out of Musselman, Dewey McDonald out of Jefferson. Have you or Tyson spoken with either of those two in regards to what you can expect in that jump from college ball to the NFL? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, both of those guys are an uh, integral part of um, of. Tyson's like I wouldn't even say life. I mean, he he spends time with Trayvon and they talk and they throw and and that's on. And Dewey is a little older, so that's my guy for the most part. So we, uh, you know, our lives cross paths all the time. I think that the biggest um, the biggest thing that that those guys did for Tyson was just let him know that, dude, I can do this, right? Like these two guys were very sorely recruited as well. Um, Trayvon Wesco paid for his first year of college. Right, which is just astronomical if you think about that and the the level that he's achieved. And then with Dewey coming from a D2 as well. So I think that those are probably two guys that Tice was definitely started shaking his head and saying, you know what, if they can do it, I'm going to do it too. Do you think the best players in West Virginia are under-recruited? Travis? Yes, I think that high school football in the state of West Virginia is not very good. So that's the first thing. So before you start, if you're a West Virginia guy, start your complaining and judging in the mirror and realize that Martinsburg High School is an outlier and that every other school is only as good as Martinsburg once every eight years. And they continue to be good. So there is competition, don't get me wrong, but it's not um, it's it's not by the same team on a year in and year out, but you're going to find Martinsburg there. But Martinsburg has to understand that they are the outlier, and because of the state being so poorly um, represented from an athlete standpoint, and you know, it's 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 easy to see it if you just go somewhere else. Right. If you go anywhere else, it's like, my goodness, what level is this? And you realize that our schools are small. And um, and we're we're pretty slow and we're pretty little. Um, however, that doesn't mean that to me that means that you really need to take a look at Trayvon Wesco's road and junior college, and you got to respect the MEC and the PSAC. And when those D two schools come calling, don't be so um, you know don't stick your nose up too far because it's really amazing that you're even getting those looks as well. And if you're a parent and you hear my voice, either get out of West Virginia or understand that when Glenville comes calling, that's just like being in Virginia and having Richmond come calling. Um, so, you know, that's that's just my belief. I didn't believe that uh, four years ago, mm-hmm. um, and that's why I was here at Martinsburg. I had no idea that uh, we should have went across the bridge somewhere and played at any other team in Maryland or Virginia. Um, on the flip side, I really have a tremendous amount of respect for D2 football and Coach McCook in the Shepherd program. So the scholarship, the free to find scholarship at Martinsburg High School, to me, is just a gift from the Angels when it comes to that. It's the biggest scholarship I know of that pays your whole tuition at Shepherd. Um, the promise still leaves you with a pretty good bill there. So to me, the level of um, coaching at Martinsburg High School combined with the fine scholarship and my respect and level of Shepherd football made our path pretty easy for us. Um, But I just urge, you know, it usually takes a a really strong family member to really get all the information to find out what's the best thing for your kid. As a high school football coach, I watch a ton of game film. My fall is spent doing almost nothing but watching game film once I leave here and leave and leave practice. And I see kids in Maryland who get full rides to Power 5 D1s, and I'll watch the replay of a Martinsburg game on a Friday night, and I'll see kids in Maryland or Virginia who are getting a scholarship on body type because they haven't produced enough 
yet to make me think they're worthy of a ride at that level, but they're getting the ride offered because of their body type. I'll see that same body type at a Martinsburg game, and they're not even being recruited in, in many cases. No doubt. And I'll tell people, don't complain about it. Just understand it. So if you have a kid with that body type and you can get over that bridge in Sharpsburg, I urge you to do it, right? And, or do not complain mm-hmm. because the, the writing's on the wall. And if you do stay in West Virginia, make sure that you understand everything that that high school and what path it has to offer and are you okay with that path. And if you are, to you know, Martinsburg to Shepherd's a pretty sweet deal. And I'm telling you, if this recruiting class that I got coming in is the way I want it to be, you're going to see Martinsburg everywhere at Shepherd's University. Everywhere. So just keep that in mind. There's a couple past players the last couple years that went elsewhere. Don't be surprised when they're Bulldogs now.